sonata in C major. What an amazing piece. It's one of the most popular cello music ever written for cello student. And rightfully so. It's very interesting to play. And especially at the beginning, it's quite difficult to figure out what to do. There are not too many shifts to figure out, but so many challenges with rhythm, phrasing and articulation. In this video, I will patiently explain everything I know about this music and I will try to answer all possible questions about this movement. In case you would like to hear me play this movement in fast tempo or to get a chance to play along in a slower tempo, I'll put links in the description so you can watch those videos too. First two measures, chords. How to play them? When you see three notes, you have to play bottom note and the middle note together. And then switch to middle note and the top note. And when you put it together, it will sound. And the second chord, the same way. And in the third chord, you play two bottom notes together and then two top notes together. Let me play those three chords, one after another. You think about beginning of the first chord as a pickup note. So when you will get chance to play with piano accompaniment, then the first note of the piano downbeat will have to be together with the top part of this chord. Let me show you how it works with counting. Three and four and. One more time, the top part of the chord comes on the downbeat. Uh, it's important to count through those chords because in piano part there will be consistent eighth notes. Now I will play for you the first line, tempo, quarter note 60. After you play the third chord, you can take a little bit of time to make a retake. In the music there is no rest, but traditionally it's perfectly fine to make about quarter note rest. So you can move your right hand and get to the lower part of the bow. If you don't do it, then you risk getting stuck in the upper part of the bowl. Now measure six, trill and grace note. How do we play a trill? We play the note we see there, which is an F, and then we use one letter up, which in this case is G. We have to make at least two turns to make this trill to happen. And two notes after that are not description what you have to play in a trill, but they are grace notes. So grace notes after trill have nothing to do with the notes you have to play for trill. So in a trill you play and 
then you play two grace notes. As a result, you will play and you will have to fit all those notes in one quarter note. So in tempo uh, 60, it will sound this way. After you spend some time practicing, you can make more turns in trill. So that might sound like this. But I would strongly suggest to start just with two turns to avoid making yourself very confused. Now I will play for you measures 7 through 10. have to pay attention to staccato, three notes up bow in measures 7 and 8. I would suggest to start working in a slower tempo. It might help to turn your wrist a little bit more towards the index finger, so you have better contact with the string. shouldn't bounce off from the string. If that happens, you will lose control. There is tricky rhythm in measure 9. It's a reverse dotted rhythm where you have to play the faster note first and longer note after that. So you might want to think in 16th notes. Pa 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 pa. And place the first note right away and make sure that there are three sixteenth notes in the dotted eighth note. So it will sound this way. Now measures 11 through 22. You have to pay attention to bowings here. In order to avoid getting confused, I would suggest to write extra bowings. So every time you play, you don't have to think about them. Now measures 19 and 20. You have trill and two sixteenth notes after that. It's quite confusing. I suggest to play it exactly the same way as you play trill and grace notes in a measure 6. It looks different here, but it will work in a faster tempo exactly the same way. Let me show that spot. The same idea, two turns for trill. You start with the main note, which is C, and you end with the same C, and then after that you play two sixteenth notes. Mm -hmm. 
After that, you will have to play three quarter notes up bow. First two of them are connected, then you make a short stop between second and the third note and play the third note, but you have to play it up bow. It will work this way. Two notes connected and the third note is not connected. Measures 23 through 28. In the measure 26, try to be very careful with the triplet rhythm. You know that three triplet eighth notes you have to fit in the quarter note. Very common mistake is to rush through the first quarter note of the measure 26. You have to make sure that's a full length and you play low G, open G string, right on the second beat. Again, it's very common mistake to play it in an incorrect way, so pay extra attention. Now, in measure 27, there are tricky bowings. You have to play some notes separately and some notes slurred. Again, it would help a lot if you write down extra bowings there and it will take you some time to make sure that it's not difficult for you and you don't have to think about bones. I would suggest spending more bow when you have to play beginning of the first and the third beats. Otherwise, you will not have enough bow for three slurred notes, which you have to play up bow. Measures 29 through 31. The main challenge here is to make good string crossings. You have to go from G to A string and then from C to D string. It's quite tricky. Make sure that you are actually turning the wrist. Consider that each string requires slightly different angle of the bow. So when you play on the G string, you have this angle and then when you go to the A string, you have to change the angle. If you don't do it, chances are that one of the notes will be extremely squeaky. The best way to practice is just to play all those notes in a slower tempo. Just make sure you don't use too much bow. I would suggest still using about a quarter of the bow. But then when you play it slower, then you will have enough time to learn the proper right hand technique. When you learn it right in a slower tempo and start playing faster, you might end up turning the bow a little bit less. But as far as you're aware that you have to pay attention to that, you will be fine and your sound will be very clear. Measures 32 through 36. <laughs> Pay 
attention to the bowing in major 33. It comes up bow. The previous slur in major 32 is also up bow. This way you'll have to stop the bow and then continue up bow. <laughs> After that, you have syncopated rhythm. That means that you have the longer note of the beat. At any rate, make sure that you count and you subdivide one and two and, and you count through the C, the second note of the measure 33. One and two. After that, you have the combination of trill and two grace notes, something we already talked about. Then, measure 34. It looks and especially sounds almost the same way as measure 26. But be extremely careful. Unlike measure 26, measure 34 has first note just a triplet note. Try not to copy the rhythm you learned before. That will be a big mistake. So right away from the downbeat, you have to play steady triplet notes. That will work this way. No delay playing the second note of the measure 34. And now measures 37 through 39. You have dotted rhythm with two 30 second notes. They are not that tricky if you place them right. Think about them as just a 16th note split into two parts. So you still subdivide pa 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 to 16th notes and then you try to fit those two 32nd notes in the last 16th note of the beat. It might be helpful to play the second and the third beats of measure 37 again and again to learn this rhythm right. And two chords of measure 39 you play the same way as we played first chords of the movement two notes at a time. Moving on, now I will play for you measures 40 through 51. In a slower tempo, I deliberately try to use very little vibrato. It's very useful not to use a lot of vibrato so you can listen to your intonation, how precisely you are finding each note. Sometimes vibrato 
serves as a distraction. And when you practice, you have to make sure that you spend some time playing without vibrato, non-vibrato. Few things to pay attention here. In measure 49, you have a grace note, which usually comes before the beat. So you take a little bit of time from the last note of measure 48. And then you have to play C, the first eighth note, right on the downbeat of measure 49. Right after that, you have this reverse dotted rhythm we already talked about. Remember, measure 9? So it will work exactly the same way. Right after that, you have to make a shift. Try making this shift when you still play the last note of the measure 50. Because that note is open string and it gives you enough time to move your left hand. So your left hand has to be ready to play on the D string before your right hand is moving to that string. I will show it in a slower tempo. So I feel that my left hand is not in a hurry. And then when it's time to play, I don't panic and I play it in tune. The last two quarter notes of measure 51, you play the first E with the fourth finger. And then you have to play the same note with the third finger. You have to make this shift to prepare playing the notes in the next measure. Now I'll play for you pick up to measure 52 through measure 58. Another kind of embellishment. In a measure 56, you have this squiggly line, which is called mordant. The easiest way to explain how mordant works is to say that it's very short trill, just one turn. You have to make an artistic choice. Very often it is suggested to play the mordant right on the beat. It would sound like this. I like to play it slightly before the beat. So technically it sounds more like two grace notes. Again, uh, your teacher might have an opinion about that. So make sure that you follow your teacher's advice. But my taste is to play this mordant slightly before the beat. Moving on, measures 58 through 68.
careful in measure 59 uh, count through eighth note rests if it helps you can think about combination of eighth note with the eighth note rest as a quarter note with the dot on top so just think about shorter quarter note and then you have to wait till the next beat comes And it is a good idea to make the shift a little bit earlier when you have this rest. So you are prepared, you are not making this shift in the last moment. Again, the left hand moves before the right hand. Practice in a slower tempo, and then in a faster tempo, it will help you a lot. Measure 65 and 66. Eighth notes usually are done spiccato. But in order to have it off string, you will have to get to the faster tempo. I would suggest to wait playing them off the string, and in a slower tempo, try just to keep the bow on the string, just make sure that your right hand is quite active. Then, when you are ready to play in a faster tempo, it will work this way. The following measure is ritenuto, that means you'll have to slow down. Make sure you don't slow down right away. When you see tempo change like ritenuto or accelerando, that means you have to start making this uh, tempo change a little bit later and do it in a very gradual way. Think about train. When train has to slow down, it does it little by little. The same when train is leaving the station, then it accelerates little by little too. In the next few lines we have familiar music. It's the same, the first theme coming back here. So it's recapitulation. And I will play for you starting from measure 68. So many things here are already familiar to you. 
uh, and uh, the same combination of the trill and two sixteenth notes in the measures 87 and 88. I think in the measure 87 I made more than two turns. So again, it will be up to you as far as you can fit all of those notes, trill and two sixteenth notes in the one beat, in one quarter note, you are fine. In the measures 89 to 92, I would suggest to stay in the upper part of the bow. You get there playing a D quarter note and using more bow, and then you just stay in the upper part of the bow. That will be a bit more difficult to play, but that will allow you to play with more clarity, with better articulation, without making it too heavy. I would suggest spending more bow playing three slurred eighth notes in a measure 89, and this way you will end up in the upper part of the bow. After that, you move to the lower part of the bow and you'll play triplet notes forte very active. And then when it comes time to play piano, you will still be playing in the lower part of the bow, just using way less bow. So we will hear clear difference between forte and piano. <laughs> measure 95 you have long crescendo. At the beginning of that measure you will still need to play the notes on the short side, but then little by little you, you will start using more bow, and this way the notes will sound more connected and louder. <laughs> And now I will play for you the last part, starting from the measure 93. <laughs> Last line, starting from measure 101, adds some more challenges. Here you have to count really well, because the placement of the last note, the 16th note of measure 101, is extremely important. The suggestion here is to take some time to make a retake. This way you will play dotted quarter note tied with the dotted eighth note, using as much bow as you need. And then you take some time and you move much closer to the frog to play the sixteenth note and to get enough bow for the following trill. Let me show you how it works. I would suggest to start making a retake at the beginning of the beat 4, so you have plenty of time to prepare to play that 16th note in the lower part of the bowl. In the 
measure 102. It's not a misprint that you have the up bow right in the middle of the measure where you have no note. That means that you have to play this whole note using two bows. This is not Breval's suggestion. This is Suzuki edition suggestion. So that might be different options to do it, but since uh, I'm explaining it to you using Suzuki edition, we will work this way. Change this bow around the third beat. You don't have to be extremely precise with that. And you need to try to avoid that accent when you change the bow. It will work this way. Using two bows will make it easier for you to make this trill loud and to avoid having too little of the bow to play it. And after that, we have dotted rhythm with two 30-second notes, which you already know how to count, and this piece ends with two gorgeous C major chords. And you play two bottom notes together and two top notes. <laughs> I hope it will help you to work on this amazing music. Again, if you would like to hear it in a faster tempo with vibrato, with phrasing, with dynamics, uh, and you want to prepare by playing alone with the slow version of this piece, there will be two links in the description. Please check it out. And as always, thank you for watching. Let's keep playing cello. And see you again on Chilopedia.